I hope you're ready for some ill logic. Last time we went over a top 12 match against Tony and his mighty mill tanks. Please go check out that video first if you've not done so already. So we went over the team builder and battle in which, well, I don't think there's a bigger spoiler in this video existing. So I'll go ahead and let you know that we earned a 3-0 victory off the back of Obstagoon's four KOs and some clutch play around an early Dragonite. This time we're facing off with the number four seeded Route 1 Burbs. Timestamps are in the description. This was Michael's first real draft season with us, but he was super impressive in our monotype league, taking down the champion during their Elite Four run with his mono fire team. Our matches that season were filled to the brim with hacks, so here's hoping for a clean one. One more thing to note is that Michael did lose three times this season, and those three losses were to the three teams ahead of him, against which we finished 2-1 and one with a plus 6 differential. This is a big test for the Burbs, but the expectations are that if I pull out the win, I have a better shot at a deep run than he does. Of course, he did finish as a higher seed. But of course, I've been on a bit of a hot streak. But ah, let's just break down his team. Dragapult at the top, Keldeo, Meowstic, Comfey, Tentacruel, Gorgeist, Darmanitan, Rotom, Frost, Mamoswine, Umbreon, and Steelix. Speedy team with great control elements and a couple of absolute nukes. Honestly, tough team with lots of answers to my team. But I have plenty of answers to him too. For example, he's brought Meowstic probably more than is warranted, but it isn't too terribly good in this matchup. Screens aside, Obstagoon stops at cold, Nidoking is immune to paralysis, as is Zero, of course, as are Rotom and Claydol which means I just have several options to it. I may need Brick Break and or Defog to help out, but I'm not terribly concerned. Umbreon struggles similarly. Maybe I'm just biased against these mons, or maybe I genuinely have a great matchup against them. Obstacle and Cobalion, for example, have the easiest matchups in the world against Umbreon. That plus the amount of taunt users I'm packing should help tremendously. Rotom Frost isn't bad per se, but it does struggle against many of my best mons. Its stabs are nearly unresisted in the entirety of Pokemon, but it isn't all that good overall, honestly, and of one of my mons that resist one or the other do pretty well against it. Comfey does have some interesting utility in the matchup between a Calm Mindset or just packing Draining Gifts or Giga Drain with priority, and it could very much be a problem, but it isn't something Michael has favored much this season, perhaps due to how passive it is overall otherwise. Finally, I think Steelix does quite well in the matchup, but Michael has brought Steelix a total of one time during the regular season, a big bulky physical wall in its steel type. Seems like a decent formula to wall some like maybe Zero Aura or hit with its fearsome stab ground moves, but alas, I do have a few good answers to it if I can get them in safely. This is his best rocker though, and yet Gorgeist has come often to his matches and probably does come again here. It's a decent Zero Aura check, in some ways maybe better than Steelix, with stab ghost moves dealing a hefty amount of damage to most everything I've got aside from Obstagoon too, not to mention how annoying something like Leech Seed could be. The dynamic water duo of Tentacruel and Keldeo should be coming too. Resists from my Ficious Rend and Ice School Crash combo are invaluable, especially Keldeo for being able to flip turn out of an incoming Zero Aura or just being a great Scarfer. Tentacruel can ruin my day with Scald Burns and T-Spikes, with Keldeo just tearing holes in the team. The last three are the ones I'm definitely most afraid of, starting with Dragapult. Base 142 speed, amazing physical special mixed, and support sets. Wow, just a monster, though I have a decent matchup against it. Uh, without a fairy type and only one ghost resist, maybe not. Mammoth Swine has a field day too. Earthquake is extremely spammable, and Ice School Crash or Ice Shard can hit all of my ground answers minus Rotom super effectively. Toss in, save, knock off, and, su and superpower. How much of my team does it hit super effectively? If you guessed all of them, you guessed correctly. I have the speed advantage, but. Well, the last man is Darmanitan, and I'm in particular very afraid of Scarf Darmanitan. I could try and pack Protect to Scout for it, but. I don't know, it could sub up on me, or click a move to which I don't have any switch-ins left, or it's going to take something down basically every time it comes in, or it could just break apart the team alongside Mamoswine for a Dragapult sweep. As for me, Claydol just cannot come. It's an okay switch into something like Darm, but it's taken advantage of by basically every single other team member, which is not enough to justify bringing it, especially when the Hazard matchup isn't looking to be very important this time. Tankla also can't come, with his physical attackers being freaking Darmanitan and Mamoswine. Dragapult's too unpredictable too, and I don't want to risk a weakness policy set if I were to have run knockoff as the only real coverage move for it when I don't even have a fairy type to soak up a hit. Rotom isn't coming either though, I like the idea of burning things like Mamoswine. Darm outspeeds, Dragapult outspeeds, Keldeo outspeeds, and I'm not going to give a ground type of his a free turn by locking in with Choice Scarf. From here it was a bit tough to narrow down the final team members. I thought I would be bringing Cobalion during the whole process up until actually putting the team together where I realized it didn't provide enough to justify bringing it while doubling up on a few too many weaknesses of the team. It's got a great matchup against things like Umbreon and is my only dragon resist and even outspeeds things like Mamoswine and Darmanitan, but otherwise it, it's a struggle and it isn't enough to justify me bringing it. Finally, 
yeah, I have to keep Victini on the bench. I had it on the team until a couple hours before the match, with V-Create, of course, and a tech move of T-Wave to maybe stop a sweep, but weaknesses to ground, water, and ghost with him having multiple of each of those types that are likely to come made for a bad time overall. It was once again about team composition, which we'll go over right now. The name of the game is Offense. Hyper Offense, actually. I'm not going to give him any room to maneuver with all match. At least that's the goal. Nothing exemplifies this more than Scarf Noivern, who outspeeds Dragapult, plus one Mamoswine, plus one Darmanitan, plus one Tentacruel, and plus one Keldeo. Yes, it will take a plus one Dragapult to outspeed me, or plus two of the aforementioned ones, but we've got at least a couple of options to do something about Dragapult to make sure it can't set up. For Noivern, it's obviously Draco Meteor is the answer, but Air Slash for Keldeo is outstanding too, alongside Flamethrower for Steelix, so I'm no longer scared of Dragapult, and U-Turn for easy momentum. It's pretty simple, everyone loves a Scarf. But what about a second Scarf? Obstacoon is going without the Flame Orb for the second time this season in favor of a choice item. We outspeed plus one Mamoswine, which I do think could possibly come, as well as this whole team at neutral, including Dragapult, while being immune to Meowstic's prankster moves. Knockoff is my spammable move of choice, alongside Double Edge, which could have inspired me to run Reckless as the ability, but I like the idea of swapping into a Tentacruel Scald or a Gorgeist Will-O-Wisp and actually benefiting from it, so Guts is going to stay for now. Close Combat 2 it KOs all Umbreon while hitting Mamoswine, Rotom, and Steelix super effectively, and Switcheroo is kind of a last-ditch effort with the Choice Scarf, uh, just in case I don't feel like I can Oko something, or maybe it's a Steelix that I don't think is, I'm going to be able to do much to, and I can at least trick it the Choice Scarf and lock it into something that it doesn't want. Umbreon, maybe I'm, I'm wearing out Toxic Time, or you know, something like that. So it's going to be all about positioning otherwise, and speaking of which, I may as well just go to Zero Aura next, which also outspeeds Dragapult by a whole base point. Scarf Zero Aura could have made a lot of sense, I think, of course, for D-Dance Dragapult, but I liked the utility provided by swapping moves and having access to Taunt in particular for things like Mousetic or Umbreon. We're going special again with Volt Switch and Aura Sphere, uh, which hits the bottom four mons uh, in the speed tiers, and a knockoff to 2 hit KO Dragapult even without any offensive investment in a minus nature. We don't have the investment by Locked, like the raw HP, to help out in the bulk department, against, especially against something like a Flare Blitz Darmanitan, or something of that nature. Expert Belt will provide that extra oomph anyways, as we hit 9 of his 11 team members super effectively. Speaking of hitting things super effectively, we've got Nido King next, up with the big tech move of the weekend, Sucker Punch. And this is a move that lets us outspeed Dragapult or secure other big KOs otherwise against low HP targets. The rest is standard, Earth Power for general spam ability, and Sludge Wave particularly for Comfey, which I don't really have many great options for, so I felt like it needed to come. The final move here is, of course, Ice Beam. It's going to hit Gorgeist and Dragapult if, uh, if we needed to do so, as we almost mimic Mamoswine's predicted coverage, which is kind of interesting. Speed is for that Mammoth Swine, and otherwise Nido King should prove handy for a bit of break against anything, but probably that Umbreon. We do need some more answers to the Umbreon, which is something he's favored, even if I don't think it's too likely to come. So let's finish with the Hail Core, who not only provide Hail Chip and reduced healing for Moonlight and Synthesis, but also destroys team overall with the coverage and speed. Vanillix, while normally something like Specs or Scarf, is actually fully physically defensive, with Taunt and Aurora Veil as fantastic options to support things like the next one on the list, and shut down Setup or Wish in its tracks. Free Star is the offensive option, specifically for things like Tentacruel and Keldeo, with Ice Shard providing that extra bit of priority that can once again hit Dragapult or something else that's rampaging. The name of Vanillix's game is Chip, which is also facilitated by that Icy Rock, and the amazing reason we're running that is the raw power of our final team member, which is going to be a Life Orb Arctivish. Yeah, Vicious Run, Ice Cold Crash, and Psychic Fangs together annihilate his entire team. Protect is the last move. I, I don't know, I didn't really need another move. Substitute could be cheeky if I decided, but, uh, but I didn't really want to do that, just in case of Infiltrator or Dragapult, and he should know that I have favored Substitute quite often in the past. So Protect can at least scout out a Scarf move, yeah, maybe. Speaking of, speed is for Dragapult, Scarf Rotom, and an Adamant Scarf Darmanitan. I'm not planning on taking hits with Arctivish, but that Life Orb really boosts up the damage just enough, so we may or may not see in the battle. Let's get into it. The quarterfinals against the Route 1 Burbs. Well, no water types, and instead are the Comfey and Umbreon. That implies a more defensive approach, or at least one with choice items, life orbs, and or setup facilitated by the Umbreon. When I had Victini on the team over Noivern, I told myself to lead Nidoking as my best answer to his hazard setters. With only Mamoswine here and the potential for him to see defog Noivern, I'm going to lead Noivern instead as the fastest member that can prevent Scarf Darm from claiming one right away. Good luck, have fun, two fruit taco. Yup. It's Darm. So, Rock Slide KOs, and even Flare Blitz actually has a chance, which is pretty funny. Well, Draco Meter does not. Well, I really don't have a better option. I really want to get damage on this thing as soon as humanly possible, so I'm going for Draco. 
Let's see, Life Orb, so it's not Scarf, also very important. That was kind of part of the calcs there as he goes into the Umbreon, who eats the Draco Meteor while considering that was a crit, 58%. It's actually a good bit. And actually, the most interesting part is no leftovers there. Interesting, interesting. Don't really have too much to do here, and that's not like I'm going to stay on Draco again. So I'm just going to go into something that can handle Umbreon. Can you believe why people that people struggle with Umbreon so much? Well, let's look at the situation overall. Only Umbreon has damage on it. So if he's wishing, it's going to itself. Otherwise, what, toxic? No matter how you look at it, he has to double out in order to stay ahead of me. But with Umbreon below half, he just cannot do that. In that sense, maybe the current laddered, but you know, we'll see. As my best answer, Umbreon right now will be Vanilla, because he does wish indeed. I think we all know where this is going. He's scared of Blizzard taking out the last 36% of his life, which we'll see there after the Hail Chip. And if he's scared of that, then Protect will be coming out here. If he swaps into something else to get the free switch, I, okay, either way, Aurora Veil is the play. Yep, Protect, and let's get up the Aurora Veil. Very nice, very nice. Uh, down to 80%, that's okay. He's probably going to be going for either another Wish or maybe a Toxic, but probably the former. Let's lay down a Taunt. Yep, stopped the Wish. See how easy it is? Vanillix, man, just getting that chip, too. And now that he's going to switch, as he is legally required to do, that's the most free switch in the entire game history for Arctivish. Mammoth Swine, buddy, you may be immune to hail, but even if you ice shard me, this is going to end. This is not going to end well for you. This could end you. Ficious is going to be absolutely free here. This is what I love to see, getting Arctivish into position quite properly. Umbreon is going to come back in maybe as the sack. And I say sack because holy damage, Batman. That's just too much to something so bulky. It's a shame to see Umbreon gone so soon. This really is the best mod for Arctivish to take advantage of, especially outside of Hail. And there's another way to deal with Umbreon, but I digress. I'll take the KO 6-5, to five, somewhat early, with his biggest support mod out of the way early. He has stalled out the Hail a good bit, meaning now on our last turn we actually have to deal with Gorgeist of all things. Now, Icicle Crash against the big form will not Oko, while Power Whip will. Do we want to save Arctivish? Of course we do, of course we do. Power Whip resists aren't the most plentiful right now, but we do have maybe the best switch in the game to Poltergeist and Will-O-Wisp, and that is Obstagoon. So let's just go into that right now. Uh, Trick Room? That is unexpected, to say the least. Well, let's just stop whatever shenanigans he's got going on right now. Power Whip does more than half to me, but Knock Off also does more than weakness policy. Wow, I was afraid of a Dragapult carrying the weakness policy but this is a crazy set. Now what? I wanted to save Obstacoon for later here. Well, maybe. We don't know the Scarfs, and Obstacoon can't take a hit anymore, so it may just be used as a sack later, but it's probably worth it. We can survive a hit for sure with this Vanillix here and have another go at the Hail shenanigans with only Scarf, Dragapult, or Giga Drain Comfey left to stop us. Vanillix does come in. Um, it is going to take a hefty chunk from Power Whip, but those are the defensive stats that are coming into play there. That's that investment. That's for sure. That's awesome. I'm gonna, I am gonna. wasn't really sure what I was going to do from this point, other than knowing that I wanted to get Hail up again at some point, and knowing it could be good in chipping the Gorgeist. So now what? Maybe I could get the, let the Neoking come in after and Sucker Punch? Well, even without any speed, I'm, I'm assuming he's slower due to carrying the Trick Room. I'm just going to get some chip off. Free Shard wasn't as good this game anyways because of a lack of the water types. So I'm just going to Ice Shard to get a little bit of damage before the Ice Cream goes down 5 to 5. However, look how low he's dropping here. 4%. Why, that's one more turn of Hail. And with one more turn of Trick Room left, too. That is also incredibly important to note. I don't need to put Neo King in harm's way. It'd be interesting to see how the match would have gone if I had gone with that option, but instead, I went to Arctivish. Remember how I didn't put Substitute on the set? Honestly, I was early in this match regretting the fact that I did not put Substitute on it. On a, the turn that I had for free against the Umbreon, I really wanted to sub up at that time, but I didn't have it. I had Protect and Psychic Fangs instead, and they weren't exactly going to be doing much for me there, so I really regretted it. However, at this point, everything has come together perfectly. The adamant nature on Obstacoon with knockoff, the hail chip, the ice shard, not having a minus attack nature, everything has come together to bring Gorgeist below 6%. And, of course, the final piece, Protect, was the move I put on it instead. I'm actually clicking it here crazily enough. That'll give a KO to Vanillix Postmortem, 5-4 now, but his four biggest threats are still alive. With this being my last possible ride with Arctivish, no reason to do anything but click buttons for five turns. Mamoswine comes in, huh? Well, maybe it's because he's slow, but 
that makes decent sense as a sack, but that should tell me a couple things. Why is he sacking this right now? Does that mean that Dragapult isn't scarfed? What about the Comfe? That's kind of strange, isn't it? Maybe Focus Sash? I can't afford to do literally anything else but Fish's Rent. I just do not have another play. So let's just... Oh, hello, Dragapult. Blam! Over half. Well over half. But they resisted move. What a freak you are, Arctivish. Well, it isn't a Boofalot match without a misplay, as Fishes is literally the only move I need to click to win. But spoiler alert, I clicked Icicle Crash for some reason. I did not miss. <laughs> Dragapult goes down, but what if I had missed? What if he had doubled into Darm or Mamoswine? There was literally no reason for that. Just a blonde moment, I guess, or something. No harm, no foul, 5-3. to three. And We have... We're running out of Hail turns. Only three turns left of Hail with three months left. There's Comfy. Hello, friend. So Draining Kiss, Giga Drain, and Synthesis all move before I do, nullifying the boost to Fish's Rend. It does suck, but I literally cannot do anything but this right now. Fish's Rend. I go first crit! Oh, one hit K. Oh, I literally gasped and covered my mouth when this happened. I didn't expect to go first. I didn't know the calc. I got to see a TV spread afterward. If it'll make you feel better, it was 252 HP, 4 defense, and at that range, the Oko with Fish's Rend was a 15 out of 16 roll. Crit didn't even matter, and even then it was holding an eject button, which means if I had no code, it would have swapped out anyways, which would have really just stalled one more turn of hail. That's, I believe, all it could possibly do. Super strange comfy. It was trying to go for a tailwind there, I believe, with no attack moves to let his teammate set up or break, but I guess that means it couldn't stop the fish. From here, we just need to avoid Focus Sashes, which I'm definitely guessing he doesn't, considering it would have been his first option. We're going to come out victorious in the quarterfinals, 5-0 to zero over Risky Biscuit Fruit Taco. GG to Michael. Arctivish! Really love seeing Obscoon and Vinlux and Arctivish carrying the team in the playoffs. The lower tier mons are putting in so much work right now. So Michael's team's goal was to set up a Flame Charger 2 with Darmanitan and win, or D-Dance up with Dragapult that didn't have Ghost coverage at all. We kept the pressure on with a Hail Core and came out victorious thanks to Arctivish taking advantage of the lack of Scarfers on his team and the early chip on Umbreon. Relatively clean game, though of course if anything, hacks went to my side. That'll do it this time, I suppose. We're back in the semifinals! On one side of the bracket, our semifinals opponent from last season, John, went down to Joey's Akron Agrons, and our old rival Steve Chuck, the other semifinalist from last season, fell to newcomer Alf Owls and his Newport Noctowls. As for us, Matt Cincinnati and Cineror fell to our opponent for next week. Oh boy, this is the big one. A finals rematch from seasons 2, 3, and 6. Chad and his Seattle steamrollers await. See ya.